Hello and welcome to the section where we're going to be building an app called Hikers Watch. So the basic idea of this app is that you're someone who loves to hike, explore. You can open up this app and without tapping any buttons, this is the real magic of this, you just open it up and it will tell you what your latitude, longitude is, uh, how accurate the GPS is at the current moment, what your current altitude is, and what the address is for the place that you are in. So, uh, for example, I put in a new location. I'm going to try and get us back to... New York, I go ahead and hit send here, and boom, all of a sudden we're on 16th Street in New York, and I've listed out the zip code, the state, uh, the street address, just all sorts of awesome stuff there, okay? Um, so this is the app that I want you to build. Uh, one thing that you may notice is we are full screen here. Uh, we don't even have that little bar at the top, and we've got an image filling up the whole thing, so you're going to have to figure out how to do that. Uh, awesome website to go get images, unsplash.com, I've mentioned before, but just wanted you to know great place to go get those uh, and yeah you should have all the know-how how to do this right this is our geolocation this is working uh, with location objects and stuff so uh, go ahead try and tackle this yourself I really believe that you can do this one without any of my help uh, but if you need anything or you just want to see how I did it you can always move forwards okay so go ahead and attack it now all right let's go ahead and get started here we're gonna start a new Android project and we're going to go ahead and call this Hiker's Watch. Again, I would avoid the apostrophe there because you don't want to come through uh, with that messing up anything. So let's go ahead and hit next on this. One at least API 23. And we'll just do the empty activity because we're not showing maps in this one. And then we'll go ahead and hit finish here. Okay, so while this is going, uh, we want to have that nice full screen image for our app so uh, let's go ahead and go here to unsplash lots of different pictures here that you could use for your app uh, just go ahead and kind of pick one that you think looks nice i like this one of sort of the stars out at night uh, it's got that camping tent there you can decide whether or not uh, you know this is the right picture for you but i'm going to go ahead and download this one okay and uh, i'll go ahead and minimize that and look we got this awesome picture so I'm probably going to crop this a little bit. Uh, so, oops, didn't mean to rotate like that. Uh, so I want to see my tools here. Where are those at? Ah, here we go. Uh, so I just want to make this a little bit smaller. I'm going to take like a nice chunk of the galaxy here. Maybe I'll just have it even be all stars like that. But get a nice swatch of that. We'll crop it. And then I'm going to go ahead and export this to my desktop and I'm going to call this the sky and uh, we'll go ahead and do that hit save uh, one more thing that we do want to edit here is we want to adjust the size I'm going to bring this down to mm, let's maybe do like a 500 width now we might want to do a little bit more than that but maybe let's do like a 700 and uh, we'll go ahead and say OK there and then we'll say file export throw this puppy on the desktop again but I just want to call it sky and we'll replace that other one great uh, so now that we've got that let's go ahead and exit out of there and we'll come into our app so the first thing that I want to dive into is that if we want this to be a full screen app we've got to go to our Android manifest here and rather than do this at style app theme uh, where we have the little bar at the top and all that stuff we want to go ahead and change this to at style slash theme dot at compact dot and there's all sorts of different options here but we want to go ahead and choose the no action bar so we'll go ahead and pick that one and this is a basically allows our app to go full screen so that's kind of the first quick thing that we want to fix here then let's go ahead and work about the work on the visual side of our app so I'll go ahead and make some space for us to move around in and uh, give Android Studio a second here to launch up. We do want to get rid of this text view, so go ahead and delete that. Next, we're looking for our image view that's going to fill the entire screen, so we'll go ahead, pull out an image, and it's going to ask you uh, which image that you want. It'd be nice to just pass this in, so let's go ahead, and before we do that, we'll open up our file system, and inside of Drawable, we'll right-click this and say Reveal in Finder. Okay, once we have that, we'll open up Drawable and uh, we'll open up in a new tab our desktop. I'll just do Command T to get that. And here we've got our sky. I can copy this and then paste this here into Drawable. 
and let's see if we can get that to show up there it goes and just to confirm here I'm going to do synchronize selected files looks good so now that we have that in place if I want to bring out an image view uh, it's going to ask me hey what do you want and I'm going to choose the sky so there we go that's looking pretty good now one thing uh, that we want to do first is just make sure this goes edge to edge so uh, we'll add in these constraints but just make sure you've got zero for each of them so there's zero there there's zero and there's the zero so we can see from this right side that it's touching all the edges but it's not exactly filling the whole screen so uh, what we want to do here is we want to go change the scale type and again lots of different options here my favorite tends to be center crop uh, and so let's go ahead and pick that one okay uh, we want to make sure that this actually fills up the entire app screen so we'll go ahead and uh, fire up our emulator here while we're doing a little bit more uh, the next step for us while we're waiting for that to load is we want to have a nice title here that shows that this is the hikers watch and then we want to start listing out some information here like the latitude and the longitude so uh, what we need to do first is go ahead and grab a text view we'll bring that down right in the middle in fact let's right click this and say you should be centered horizontally and uh, we'll have you be a certain distance from the top there and oh we have lost our image view here let's go ahead and do a control Z with that uh, it looks like maybe our better solution here is we're gonna select this text view and we're just gonna do a control drag oops we want the text view here there we go and I just want that button up top and I'm gonna drag it uh, to the edge there that gives me that nice distance now I think 8 is too close so let's maybe see something like uh, 20 let's see if that gives us a little more space yeah, and that seem, seems better we'll talk more if there's something that we can change uh, looks like that emulator opened up and ooh, look at that that is looking really cool I love how that looks so because this is a dark background we want to make sure that our text here is a light color so go ahead and switch to the advanced attributes roll down to where we can uh, change the uh, text color and let's make sure we have the text view selected here come down and select text color here we go so uh, we'll change this to be background light or something white right so we can see this uh, we also want to change the text size let's see what 40 looks like yeah I think this could be pretty good and let's go ahead and change this to say hikers watch okay so we've got that in place now we need to go ahead and uh, create some text uh, labels that are or text views that are going to show the latitude and the longitude so um, we'll go ahead and grab some more text views here and f we'll bring out this one first so uh, again we want to go put some attributes here so text size maybe see what 20 looks like uh, the big one here this text color we got to make sure this is nice and light so we can even read the text uh, and then we'll go ahead and give this something so it might say latitude and put like something 40 point blah 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 who knows right uh, let's go ahead and have this be a certain distance from hikers watch here so we're going to go ahead and put that uh, we want it to be a certain distance Oh, from the left looks like we're gonna have to do this visually so we'll go ahead and grab that and uh, I think it's too close to the edge I'm gonna see what 20 looks like for spacing it seem, seems pretty good I'm also gonna bump up this spacing as well let's see what uh, something like 30 looks like that should give us a good distance okay uh, so once we have that in place we can actually go ahead and copy this text view and paste it because we want one with similar size and text color right so with text views three selected let's go ahead and drag that down we'll bring it a little bit below and we want to get rid of the top uh, constraint there instead grab this and bring it to our friend there Although we want to bump up the size to be 20 and uh, we want the spacing on this left side to be 20 as well okay so that looks pretty good instead of this one being latitude we want it to be longitude excellent and now we've got that in place okay so this is a fairly solid start of where we're trying to get to um, 
we're going to have to go through and connect to these to our code, but we'll come back to that in just a second. Uh, one thing that we want to do before we forget, and that's that we need to make sure we get the correct use permission here. So we're going to say use permission. Uh, we want to get the find location, and we'll just go ahead and handle that to make sure we don't forget it. Uh, something just popped in my head, and I thought, you know what? We should do that before we run into any issues inside this app. All right, so let's get back to our main activity and start writing all our location code. And you should be an absolute pro uh, by now by this. And if you want to, feel free to copy and paste from uh, a different project. Uh, but what we're going to do here is we're going to create our location manager like we've done before. And we're going to create a location listener that we'll call location listener. Okay. Uh, so we'll go ahead and set those two up. And then inside of our onCreate, this is where we want to get these uh, all set up. So we'll say we first want to set up our location manager and say that this is equal to this dot get system service and the service that we're looking for is context dot location service. Great. So remember we've always got to cast this. So we'll go ahead and say that this is going to be a location manager. Once we have that in place, the next step for us is we want to set up the location listener. And again, you should be like, come on, Nick, I already know this stuff. And if feel free, if you can go faster than me, go ahead, do set this out. You're going to do great. Uh, we just need to go ahead and get this stuff set up. Uh, so for simple version right now, let's just go ahead. The only thing that we want to do is on location changed. Uh, we want to log some information. So let's say log.i, and we want to say location and then we're going to go ahead and pass in that location object right there and make sure we do dot two string so we can read the info from it okay so once we've got that all finished we then got to go do our classic oh don't forget the semicolon there of where we go ahead and try and get access uh, and see you know hey do are they able to uh, you know are, has the user given us permission? And if not, we need to go request it, right? That's sort of the big thing that we're looking for here. So we're going to set up an if statement, nice old curly brackets. And so the first big thing is we got to check if we have permission. So we're going to say context compact compat dot uh, check self permission. And the permission that we're looking for is we're going to say this comma manifest dot permission dot access find location excellent so we're going to make sure that this does not equal and we go want to go ahead and check package manager dot permission granted so if the permission is not granted that's when we're worried and we're going to do something about it okay and uh, so if that is not the case and we need to go ask for that permission so we're going to say activity compat compat dot request permissions and inside of here we're going to say this and we're going to do a new string array and with this inside of some curly brackets curly there we go we are going to say capital manifest dot permission dot access find location there we go. So that's going to go ahead and ask for that information. Okay. Uh, then after that, oh, we're missing one here. And that's why it's yelling at us. We have to put a, a proper tag in there or request code, excuse me. So once we've done that, this is, you know, if we didn't get permission, if we do have permission, that's the else part of this equation. Uh, then we just want to go ahead and move forward with what we got going. So, uh, for example, the location manager, we want to access this and say, okay, uh, let's go request location updates and to get this rolling we'll first pass in the location manager dot GPS provider and then we'll just do zero and zero because we want all the info and then we're going to pass in a location listener uh, are we though okay there we go finally did that then the next step for us is we want to get the last known location Right, so this is uh, in case the app opens for the first time, they've already given us permission. We got to figure out what the last location was. So we'll say last known location. 
location, there we go, is equal to location manager dot get last known location. And inside of here again, we're going to do our location manager dot GPS provider to get that good stuff. Okay. Uh, so once we've got this in place, and let's see why we are upset here. Required location manager found location. Hmm. Oh, that's because we should not be setting up a location manager. We're setting up a location. That was my mistake there. All right. Uh, so now with that in place, we can go ahead and uh, we want to go ahead and see if location is null or not. So I'm going to say if our curly brackets, and we'll check and see if location, last known location that is, is not equal to null, uh, then we want to go ahead and uh, you know update some information. But uh, rather than just go ahead and type this here, uh, we're going to go ahead and make our own function that says update location information. So uh, let's go up to the top here. Now, I guess not above the onCreate. I'm going to try and start keeping onCreate up at the top. I feel like that's a good practice. Uh, so I'm going to make a new public void function that I'm going to call update location info. And with this, we need to be able to pass in a location that we'll just call location. And then we'll go ahead and have our curly brackets there. So then inside of this function, this is where we're going to call update location info, and we're going to pass in the last known location. So then it's up to this function to then go ahead and write log out some information or, or do whatever it is that we think is best. So and in this case, I think we should just log out the information for the time being. So we'll say log i, and we'll say location, and we'll go ahead and pass this location dot to string so that we can have a sense of what's going on there, okay? Uh, so of course, uh, this is the first part of the equation. We also got to respond for what happens when someone actually is able to uh, say yes or no to the permissions. So we'll go ahead and put that just above here. And this is going to be on request permission result. So remember, this gets called whenever someone says yes or no to one of the permissions that we've asked for. So we're going to do uh, a cool little if statement here uh, where we just say, all right, first thing that we want to check and see is if uh, we were able to successfully get the grant results and check that and say if the length is greater than zero and we also want to check and see if grant results the first object inside of there is equal to the package manager dot permission granted okay so if we get this this means that we've we've got that info right and then we'd want to go about uh, you know basically the same code that we have da, 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 right here where we go requesting uh, for information. Now, uh, what we have to do is, you know, do this check, because remember, if we just go ahead and copy this line of code, it's totally fine. Let's uh, get to the end of this. Okay, so if we have this line of code, copy that, and say, okay, if we got permission, we'll go ahead and do this. The problem is this needs that one more if statement there, and this is kind of code that's gonna happen over and over again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this line of code. I'm going to copy it this way. It seems to move faster here. So I'm going to copy this and go ahead and paste that there. And we've got to make sure we put an ending curly bracket on it. Good. And we got to make sure that we change this to equals because we're saying, okay, if we were able to get permission, then go ahead and do this request thing. Uh, we're going to go ahead and just put this inside of its own function. Uh, and so we'll just go ahead here and say public void. And we're going to call this start listening. Okay, we won't take in any parameters, but it's simply just going to do this code right here. Right, we check, make sure that we have permission. And if we do, we're going to start requesting that information and so uh, we'll just put start listening right here and that will solve the problem for us uh, rather than have to always type that every single time that we want to know about the information okay uh, so now that we've got this in place 
uh, what we're going to do is go ahead and give this a test see if we can't get some of this information showing up for us okay so we'll wait for the emulator here and look at that finished up should see this popping up any moment there we go Ooh, I love the color there so we'll go ahead and say allow and oh, look at that it was the first time I was able to hit allow and actually just start into the app <laughs> been meaning to do that for a while okay uh, so what we're gonna do down here is now that we've got logcat open we're gonna go back to the emulator and we'll go ahead and hit the send button here so when we go back to logcat look at that it's showing uh, latitude longitude uh, but there's also some other cool information here it's showing the accuracy it's showing the altitude now this altitude is just one that uh, we can manually send through the emulator so it's not like it goes and looks up the location gets the altitude and sends it back so if I put in 64 here and I send this we come back and we can look oh look the altitudes uh, 64 and I found this out because I kept changing my location all around the world and I was like how is there not altitude at the, I like I put in Everest I put in the exact locations for Everest and I was still getting zero and I just thought this is insane and then I realized oh you you can manually enter the altitude that's that's how you do this let's you know if we want to do 645 Oh, that's totally possible right there. So those are the next two pieces of information that we want to add is the accuracy and the altitude. We want to add those things. And then we're going to move into the reverse geotagging where we actually go through and add, uh, right, like what the address is for this specific place. So uh, let's go back to the design view here, our XML. This is where we're going to finish off all of our visual things. So let's go ahead and grab text view 3 we're gonna copy and paste that so now we should have a text view 4 let's bring that down uh, so a couple fixes here we're gonna get rid of the top one and move it so it's just connecting those two and we're gonna change that to 20 and also its left constraint to 20 and instead of longitude this is going to tell us if I can go ahead and change the text here, let's see, text four, right? Uh, yes. So instead of longitude, we are going to put in accuracy. Okay, so maybe that's not going to have a big decimal behind it. And then let's go ahead and copy text view four. Should give us a text view five. There we go. We want to move this guy down as well. Uh, except with this one, let's get rid of its top and connect it like this then change its constraints to say 20 and 20 here okay and this one rather than accuracy this is going to tell us about the altitude all right and then the very last thing that we want to add here is we want to go ahead and add a place for the address so again let's just copy uh, one of these text views and paste it out drag one down all right, get rid of its top and connect the two there. And let's be consistent. We'll say 20 and 20. Now with this one, we've got to be a little bit careful because we want to say something like address. And then we want to go ahead and do a new line. And then it's on that new line where we're going to start uh, sharing some information. So we just got to make sure that this can handle it. So let's go ahead and say, you know, we had an address like 40 street boulevard uh, and then we do a new line and then we say somewhere kansas uh like that okay so if we go ahead and do that oh look that's a that's a beautiful address okay <laughs> so that came through that's looking awesome uh, we want to go ahead and add some proper text view ids here so that we can access these things so um to kind of make this a little bit quick, I'm going to cop, type out capital text view and I'm going to copy this so that then I can just put names really quickly in front of here. So I'm just going to say lat text view for this one. And yes, go ahead and update this. I'm going to call this uh, on number three. I'm going to call this long for the longitude text view. Go ahead and enter that. I'm going to say just say yes to all these. Uh, okay, so for this one, this is our accuracy text view. Go ahead and put that in. For altitude, we'll do alt text view. Excellent. 
and then this one will be our address text view. Excellent. So now we have the proper code so that we can go ahead and actually get access to those different pieces of information. So uh, let's go back to our code here and talk about where we need to move next. So uh, whenever we are going to get some information about the user's location, it's going to be called here in this update location info, right? Because uh, we're going to come here. In fact, on this location change, we want to change this to update location info. Okay, and we're going to pass it that location. So this is sort of our real money maker. This is where we want to make sure we just go through and, and update everything here. So uh, we need to get access to all those text views. So what we're going to do is just type them all out right here. So we're going to say capital text view, and I'm going to call this one. We'll start first with the lat text view, and we'll say this is equal to find view by ID capital R dot ID dot lat text view. Beautiful. And we just want to copy this and paste for the next five that we need here. Okay. So for this one, this is going to be the long text view, just like that. So we'll change this to say long text view. Uh, this one is going to be the accuracy text view. So we'll just change that to ACC. Uh, this should be the alt. So we'll change that to be alt. And the last one is going to be our address text view so then we can change this to address text view all right so now that we have access to each of those uh, we just have to go about the business of sort of updating all of these with the appropriate text and it's actually quite straightforward here i'm impressed with how uh, androids uh, handled this so for example let's start with the lat text view we're going to set the text there okay uh, so with this, we want to have one string that's going to say, you know, uh, we want to set the latitude and uh, we'll do our little colon with a space. And then we want to add on a string of whatever the latitude is. So we'll use this location object, our one parameter here, and we're going to do dot get latitude, just that easy. And we'll say dot to string dot to string. Let's see, is that, I mean, if get latitude is a string, then we'll be okay. No, it gives us a double. Uh, so we're gonna have to do some conversion there. So go ahead and say double dot to string, and we can pass in this double. All right, and oh, I forgot, I deleted the location. So we gotta do location dot get latitude and that'll go ahead and convert it uh, into a string and then we can go ahead and put that there so oh, looks like we're missing an ending parenthesis great so let's go ahead and first test this just one make sure that we're getting to the correct place here right so we'll have our app fire up here and i just want to see that this works and if it does then we can go rapid fire on the next pieces of information here then we're going to have to go into reverse geocoding uh, the address, but that's going to come soon enough. So let's just confirm that this part is working right now. So let's go ahead and send some information. And we sent a latitude of 40.7. So let's try like 40.66. Let's go ahead and do that. And look at that. It came through there. So that's great. You can see it's slightly off. Like I did 40.66 and it did 40.65. 9998 whatever right so kind of interesting the different details that you get there um, but then we're going to go ahead and just rapid fire this for the next three so of course these are going to be a little bit different so this is going to be our longitude text view this is going to be our accuracy uh, text view and i'm realizing that it shouldn't be ac aac it's acc so let me go ahead and update that and this last one here this is the altitude text view so for this one, uh, very simple. We just got to get longitude. No issues there. Uh, and you'd be surprised. It's about the same for all of these. So we're just going to say get accuracy. Look, we get that. And for our last one here, we'll do get altitude. And we'll go ahead and get that information. So let's go ahead and give that a run. Make sure this is working. And then if we do that, really the only thing standing in our way uh, is being able to update the address. So... 
Uh, we should have an emulator now. Let's go ahead and update some information. I'm gonna change this altitude to be like five or something like that, and boom, look, it updates that. If you're wondering why it shows up the first time, that's because we have the code to automatically update that, uh, right? But if I change this to be 1.66, bam, it can automatically change all of that. So we're looking really good. Really, just the last thing that we need to do is work on this address. Uh, oops, and I accidentally put some breakpoints there. If you ever put those, you just click on it, click again, it's going to go away. Uh, so it's time to now work with the address. So uh, remember, this is where we kind of have to do some reverse engineering here. So first thing is we're going to make a string uh, that I'm simply just going to call address. All right, and this is initially just going to be equal to some sort of warning, like could not find address frowny face so this is kind of our warning message in case things don't go right we want to have access to that there um, but then the next thing that we're going to do is over time compile an address and then update our uh, text view with that so first thing that we need to do is get uh, the information from a geocoder which then means we need to create a geocoder so we're going to say geocoder i think quite naturally we'll call that geocoder is equal to a new geocoder just like that and we have to pass it a context so we're going to go ahead and say this and the locale we're going to go ahead and say locale dot get default okay so that'll give us that uh, next thing that we need to do here is with this geocoder we need to go get some addresses so we're going to say first we're going to pass this into a list so let's just go ahead and get that set up now this is going to be a list of addresses so a list of addresses that we'll call, uh, I guess we'll call this list addresses. And we'll go ahead and set this equal to geocoder dot, and we want to get the from location. And then the location that we're going to pass is the location up at top, and we're going to get the latitude, and then location dot get longitude I kind of wish we could almost just pass it uh, a single location and it could do the rest for us but whatever uh, max result we want to go ahead and keep that at one uh, then what we're gonna do is a nice if statement here now this is code that's got to be surrounded with a try catch so let's go ahead and do that uh, we'll go down here we'll do a try and end that curly bracket then do a catch or we're gonna take any exception that we might call e Okay, uh, and then we'll do our e dot print stack trace in case we get to there. But in case things are working here, uh, then what we want to do is a little if statement. So we're going to say if get our curly brackets all right. Uh, if list addresses is not equal to null, meaning we actually got something there, uh, and do our two amper stamps list addresses dot get and we want to go ahead and get what's at position zero and then we want to check on the size of this so oh and oh, we don't want to get quite yet excuse me uh, we want to do the list addresses dot size got ahead of myself and make sure that this is greater to zero because then that would tell us there's at least one in there so if this is the case uh, then what we're going to do is, uh, if we have an actual address, then we know that we can get rid of this could not find address stuff. Uh, so we'll go ahead and say, address here, you should be equal to a string that says capital address and has a colon and then a new line break. Okay. So that sort of says, all right, we believe that we're going to get an address now. Then the next thing that we need to do is we need to go through that process of pulling out all the individual pieces uh, of an address. So uh, we had done this before. But remember, we have to do if statements to make sure we're getting what we think we're getting. So we're going to check first. Uh, we're going to say list addresses dot get. And this is where we want to get the zeroth object. And once we have that, we're gonna, you know, we have the opportunity to get the different pieces of information. So if I remember correctly, the get thoroughfare gives us the street address. So we'll go ahead and grab that and check if this is not equal to null. So if that is the case, then we'll go ahead 
and add this to our address. So we'll say, you know, address, oops, that's not our address, address plus equals, and this is where we're going to add this right here. So this will add the beginning part of the address. And once we have this in place, uh, we definitely want to add a new line here. So uh, we'll just go ahead and put a new line, oh, lowercase n there. And then it's just a matter of uh, setting up the other pieces of this address. So, uh, you know, we're going to want to go get stuff like um, the city name. So let's do, uh, in fact, I'm just going to copy all of this, paste it down below. But rather than get thoroughfare, we are going to get locality. Update this one to be get locality. And we don't want a new line after this one. We do want a space, though. So we'll just make that a space. We'll copy this one more time and we'll paste it out uh, so that we have the state, uh, or actually let's do the zip code. So we're gonna say get, and I believe that's postal code. There we go, get the postal code. And then the last thing that we wanna do is get the state. So we'll go ahead and put that down and we'll say get, and I believe that's referenced in get admin era admin area and depending on who how you like your addresses you're going to change up this to fit your needs uh, but once you have this all in place uh, you know all set up then it's time for us to take this address and update the address text view so uh, we want to make sure that this happens outside of this big if statement here right because if for some reason we weren't able to uh, get the address right we want to do it outside of all of there so we're going to go ahead and say address text view dot set text and we're going to simply set it equal to our address okay uh, so once we've gone ahead and gotten that in place let's go ahead and give this a roll this is sort of our big moment of truth here we might have some missing pieces we'll have to come back and fix but this should be uh, pretty solid for what we're looking for uh, let's open up the emulator here and look at that so <laughs> we are somewhere Random La Macarena, some big postal code there. Let's go ahead and make this something like uh, 50. See where we are now. Oh, we're in Quebec. Maybe if we go down, we can get to the US. Uh, and look at that, we're back in New York. I, I mean, that's what the uh, things that we had before. Uh, so I guess that makes sense. What happens if we move? I think that makes us more West. Yeah, all of a sudden we're in Ohio. Look at this, now we're in Iowa. Oh my goodness, this is so much fun. Uh, Colorado, we could probably go one more. Look at that, we're in Utah, that's where I'm from. Uh, so we'll just keep going. Uh, and there we are in California, I bet one more of this puts us off in the ocean. Could not find address, so that's kind of cool. We saw one of the examples where we, we couldn't get an address for something. So uh, anyways, there we have it, we made it. Uh, we successfully have this really cool uh, hiker's watch sort of gives us nice detailed information. Now there are some improvements that you can make with this, right? Like uh, I think a big one is you could trim down these numbers, sort of round them down so it's not some big massive number. And the other thing is probably if you're hiking, uh, you don't need to know your latitude, longitude, and uh, oh my goodness, I just caught an error. The accuracy and the altitude, those right now are listed as latitude, but you, these things probably don't need to be updated every second and every time you move. So if you change how often these are updated, you could probably really save the user some battery, where if they're hiking for a long time, that could be very, very important to them. So let's go ahead and make that last change. I just wanna make sure that this is uh, exactly what we wanted. So uh, we do want this one to say accuracy, uh, and that one, well, we have the updated information. I don't know why. Ah, uh, because in our code, I didn't change this. I thought, you know, that's really strange. Okay, longitude uh, right there. We're gonna change this one to accuracy. And, and the last one that we're gonna change here is we're uh, going to, what is this, the altitude. Okay. So I thought, man, that is really strange how that's doing that. Well, it's because programmatically I set that wrong. So this should look a lot better. That's some of the, if when you copy and paste, you gotta be, make sure you're sort of on your game that you're fixing the different pieces that you need. So there you go. That looks much better if I change this to, let's make this something like 2125. Oh, that put us off the ocean. Let's see if we're still in there. 
Let's see the opposite direction if I go here. Douglas City, California. Okay, interesting <laughs> how that all works. Um, and it, it, you'll probably see now how it was very important that we were checking for null in different situations, right? Uh, because some of these don't have a thoroughfare, the street address, and so it's simply just saying the city and the state so that, you know, in those situations, it, our app didn't crash or anything, right? It was still able to go. Okay, uh, so still more to learn in this section. We're going to be making a very big app. Let's talk about it in the next lecture.